Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Paola. I'm the Director of Strategic Partnerships at Fullscope. And today I will be moderating um, the amazing workshop we will have um, by Carmen. And, um, but before introducing Carmen, you know, I just wanted to like, if anyone in the audience wants to quickly um, introduce themselves or say a few words, um, yeah, like Cynthia, you were you were talking, so I don't know if you want to like briefly in a sentence mention uh, a little bit about yourself. Thank you for putting me on the spot, huh? <laughs> um, I'm from We Kept Tech, folks called Brazil, and very excited about all the projects and perspective. Um, looking forward to see a little bit of Foldscope Amazon in Peru. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Anyone else would like to say something before officially starting the, the workshop? Yeah, I want to share with you. Hi. Hi. Samia? Yeah, I'm Samia. Um, first of all, nice to meet you all. Um, it's, it's so nice to be with you in this workshop. I'm from Lebanon. I am a uh, science teacher. Okay, I used uh, to work with the Folscop with my students for three years. And I'm so excited to learn more and more about the Folscop. Thank you so much for letting us join you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Samia, for joining and also for the amazing work you've been doing with your students. Um, being an educator is, is such um, uh, an amazing job. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Anyone else would like to share um, who Hi. they are, where are they coming from, etc. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Pati Rajan in Tamil Nadu in India. So, um, I am working with uh, Full Scope past five years. So, so many students, I will give a training for so many teachers and so many students. Now, I am going on to training, giving to the students and teachers also. So, uh, the pandemic also, I will give you a training for corporation school teachers. Okay. Thank you for meet like this uh, net is giving to, I don't know in English, but I try to speak in English, that's all, okay. <laughs> Thank you okay. so much. <laughs> we were able, of course, no, your English is, is, is super good. And thank you so much for, for joining. My native language is Spanish too, so my English is not perfect either. <laughs> okay. Spanish is very nice language, you know. <laughs> So no, we are so happy you're able to join. And he, well, for the ones who don't know him, he is just an amazing example of a teacher who's taught so many students. You're a full scope um, prophet, basically, or ambassador, you know, just like sharing it with so, so many people. So we're so happy to see you here, um, representing India as well. So thank you. Uh -huh, thank you. Hi, thank you. Um, and it's evening over there, right? Yeah, nah, night, night. Yeah, well, I am in the morning. 10 so. p.m. <laughs> okay. Anyone else would like to say anything before officially starting the workshop? Yes, me. <laughs> hey. Hi, I'm Rosie from Mexico. Um, I'm doing my master's degree in plant biotechnology. Um, I I love working with Foldscopes and also I love the rainforest. A year ago I was in the jungle of Peru, so um, I want to return. <laughs> and that's that's great. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining uh, Rosie and um, yeah, I'm so happy to see you again representing Latin America and Mexico. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you. Yeah, no, this is amazing. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that. And I didn't know you had been in Peru before, so that's awesome. Yes. Yeah, for the ones who don't know, I am originally from Peru, so. Um, okay, so with that, um, if no one else um, would like to say anything. Um, Hello. 
Oh, hi. Let me introduce yes. myself. Yes. Uh, my name is Abiniza Jai from Nigeria, but yes. presently I'm in Argentina on a postdoc. Um, together with a colleague, Engineer Molle, we founded the Full Scope Niger for Nigeria, where we try to do science education outreach for young children, secondary school and um, university. We have had like four trainings already, so I'm happy to be here. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, wow. Thank you for sharing that and, and thank you for your initiative. As all of you can see, um, we, the reason why we're having these meetings also is so we can get to know each other and get to know the amazing work that's happening in Nigeria, in India, in Peru, in Mexico, in the US, in Brazil, in Lebanon, right? In, in all these um, amazing countries all over the world because our community is very, very international. Um, so with that, I would love to introduce um, our workshop leader for today, Carmen Chavez. She will present full scope in the Amazon. And um, I've known Carmen already for a couple of years and I am really, really happy, um, not only as a fellow Peruvian, but also as a, as a biologist to have her here today with us. Carmen is a National Geographic Explorer and Tropical bio Biologist, as I mentioned, from Peru. And for over the past decade, decade she has been dedicated to teaching people in her home country. Um, and also around the globe, um, to love the Amazon from the inside. Carmen directs the conservation learning web of ACIR Foundation, an organization that she works with under the support of National Geographic. So today, Carmen will take us to experience the Amazon rainforest through the eye of its local inhabitants using the full scope. So Carmen, I am really, really happy that um, you are here with us today. And now, you know, I, I hand everything to you. Um, welcome officially to Full Scope Live Workshops Saturdays. Thank you, Paola. Thank you so much. And thank you for everybody who is here in this workshop. I think this is by far the most international thing I ever done. I can't believe that right now there is all you guys from these amazing places all over the world, literally, uh, listening to this. That's um, one good thing about this uh, pandemic, I guess. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen, or I am doing it already, I'm not sure. Um, yes. Okay. Can you guys see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, well, it's really exciting for me to to tell you about the work that I've been doing and um, in, in my home country, as Paola mentioned, Peru. Although right now, I mean, I am a, I spend more time in the United States where I live with my family. All my work for the past 20 years has always been in my home country. And I spent at least, I don't know, three, four months total down in Peru. And I work very closely with um, with a team of people, obviously, and uh, we are just like um, a group of people that are passionate about the Amazon, about the people that live in the Amazon, and um, and that's what we do. And I hopefully will be able to tell you a little bit of that, and with a strong emphasis on the full scope, of course. So, oh, how I go to the next? Yeah, there you go. Just a little bit of a personal background. I was trained as a biologist in, in, in Peru and had um, some work done doing research. But after a few years of that, I realized that what I could do better for was to get people excited about the Amazon and getting people excited through opportunities of education, opportunities of research. So I become into a conservation educator. So I'm not an educator by training and I actually do not teach directly except a few times over the year, but with a team of people that I work with, which I want to introduce you to them, we are able to do everything that I'm going to show you today. So this, even though it is me who is speaking, I want you to think like everything comes from this team of people down in Peru and um, and we work for the 
AC organization, which is a nonprofit that has almost 30 years of work in Peru in the Amazon, and through the years have been doing uh, many things, but most importantly is empowering the people that live already there to be able to, uh, by themselves, make uh, their decisions, being aware of the place where they are, and, um, and, and learning about the value of it. Just to give you a little bit of a geographic perspective for all, um, you know, Peru is a, a country right in the middle of South America and we share the Amazon rainforest with other eight countries, Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, I mean, we are a, a number of countries there, but my country is more than half rainforest. So most people will associate Peru with the mountains, the Inca culture, maybe you have heard of Machu Picchu, um, but it's actually mostly rainforest. So the region, specifically in Peru, that we work is in the region of Madre de Dios, Mother of God. This region is bordering with Brazil and Bolivia, and this region, it is 100% rainforest and it's an incredibly beautiful place. It hosts many national parks and many protected areas and of course indigenous people um, that have been inhabiting this area for, for millennia but most recently uh, migrants are the larger number of inhabitants. So as you can imagine and as I think some of you have seen it. It, it, it's a paradise. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. It's just an ocean of, uh, of, uh, of green to the untrained eye, right? But it has uh, uh, all sorts of life buzzing there. So this place is not um, exempt from environmental problems, you know. And one of the largest one right now, at least for the past decade, has been gold mining, illegal gold mining. So we might not be much aware, but if you have a cell phone and a computer for the past few years, it is most likely that teeny tiny grams of gold are coming from this area, this region. So gold mining, it's, it's a big environmental issue which of course comes along with the destruction of the forest and health issues and social issues. And one of the things is that since it's made illegally and in an artisanal way, people use mercury with their hands, which is a uh, toxic. Uh, it's one of the most neurological poisons that humans and any living organism can, can, can confront. So in that reality, the organization that I work with, the ACR Foundation, uh, has created this project that we call it the Conservation Learning Web, which is not other thing than trying to capitalize in the youth, in the children, in the young, and make of them uh, leaders, become leaders, be the ones that are uh, the, the stewards for the conservation of their own background. And we work with many different organizations, institutions, people, settings, starting with the Department of Education, nonprofit organizations and universities and so on. And um, what we do is in essence, provide uh, direct contact to nature, first-hand experience, you know, this, and the normal conditions we take thousands of teachers and children uh, and volunteers to the, to the rainforest so they can experience themselves through different educational programs. We train teachers in um, small groups. So we work directly with directors so then they can transmit to the students. We do citizen science events like you know, using BioBleeds. Uh, we do reforestation, we do a lot of things, including like um, water monitoring of their creeks. Everything is science-based and experiential learning. So it's, the, it's in this framework that um, we reach all the ages, from little kids using 
puppet shows, you know, or coloring books to all the audience. So it's in that framework that we, years ago, we established this amazing relationship with Foldscope. So I just learned about this incredible tool and I thought that what could be better than providing this incredible tool to the hands of these kids in this, in this part of the world. So I just contact, you know, Manu and Jim, and they were incredibly generous and easy, so much that um, they just show up in Peru with their team. So that was incredible. And of course, they came with hundreds of false scopes for our students and teachers. So in 2000. 19 and you can see Paola there and and uh, and Jim and uh, other people from Stanford that came they we visit like 10 different schools including universities some of them and some far villages we um, work with uh, all these people and everybody took their false come home of course as probably you guys know, and um, this was an amazing experience. So here we are in a native community, and it, it was just, you know, an incredible, very intense few days that we have training workshops morning, afternoon, morning, afternoon for a whole week. So great opportunity. That's how we start using, that's how I start getting involved with it. And of course, we did everything as the team suggests us to do. We do the observations, we do the drawings, the students feel empowered, they feel uh, the, the, the sense of uh, curiosity innate. And you can imagine, uh, not everybody ha had the opportunity to use a microscope, much less to own their own and take it at home. So this is pretty incredible. And I have a few anecdotes that I wanna share. and before I get to the more, you know, workshop technique type of it. And uh, like this teacher, Genoveva, for example, she came to the workshop and she teaches in this community with her baby. I don't, you, you can see the little girl that I'm carrying while she's working with the false scope. And uh, she's so excited. She's just doing everything. And, you know, she went out and changed the diaper of her baby and then came out and, you know, she was quietly working and put it in the slide uh, as we were shown. And then she find out that what she got was this parasite. The little baby has a, a like a rash in the belly. So she knew what it was. It was a, a, a chigger, right? And an isango. And I'll let you know. And um, so, but she put it in there and quietly then, show us, and I want you to see this video because it's very impressive. So this little parasite, it's a mite, but um, in the larval stage, it, it's when it um, lives in the human body and digests somehow the skin and then feeds on the skin juices of it. It doesn't suck blood, but then it, it makes a reaction. It's very itchy. And if you have been in the jungle anywhere or, you know, you you can get chiggers easily so this is just common so that was really cool that she got the sample of her own baby of course the kids get excited and then somebody got a, a louse from a friend you know a little girl i guess got to look into the hair of the friend and then he got this one and, and all the samples that i'm showing you are the things that the kids themselves find out so I want you to see this because it's very cool. This is a video of, you can see like the red fluid moving through the body of this Laos, you know, it's this, it's just incredible. And you can see clearly like the, 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 the parts of the insect, the head, the abdomen, the antenna, all that. And then of course the little boys were after a dog and they got a dog that I was just wandering around and got a sample from this dog and they got this, this flea out of the dog and they were incredibly uh, happy to show everybody that as far as you can see this video is like the pumping. I don't know if this is the in, 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 in digestive system or what, but you can see that it, it pumps out. So this organism were, a life is still in under the microscope. So, but anyways, so 
that was parasites, but I'm not going to talk to you about parasites because I know that grows up a lot of people, but they're absolutely normal. You know, we all have it. It's just that sometimes we are a little bit uh, disgusted by those. But so then the girl, the kids also got samples just with the tape, as you know, they just get a clear tape and they get pollen. And it's just incredible the sort of things that they can bring in just from their surroundings, shapes, colors, sizes. It's just wonderful to get to see that. And this gets them very excited. So one of the things that this region of Peru is very famous for, and that's the reason we are going to be, we are working in this specific um, example is that it's one of the richest places on earth and has one of, it has the world record of butterflies diversity of a species. In a single spot in the Tambopata, there was a scientist register over 1400 different species. And people that work there, they think that there are actually thousands, not only butterflies, but you know, moths and there's just like hasn't been a study enough and there is so much to learn about it. So since the butterflies are such a staple of the region, we team up with the butter butterfly house. There's a local butterfly house as an example of sustainable business. So we take the students there. This happened last year. So after the visit, we decided like we're going to focus on key um, themes that we can work with the students a little bit more in depth to, to, to explore that. So we went to this place and they provide us like wings of the butterflies that already died. So we were like, you know, looking at something like this one, the morpho. Um, this butterfly, it's, it's, it's almost um, the poster child of the Amazon rainforest. It's, it's very common to see it. It's incredibly breathtaking that you're working, walking in the forest and you see this blue thing flying around you and you can see it's pretty large, it's bigger than your hand. So it's very impressive. So this place give us the pieces of their wings and we work on that. And the kids themselves got samples. And even though these are kind of, you can see colors, we dig more into it and it turns out that really the scales of the butterflies do not have color. They have, they don't have pigments, right? I mean, they actually is the physical structure, how they are constructed that makes them uh, seen to our eyes with colors. So that you can see how um, the images are just incredible and we can see it's scale by a scale, right? I mean, the wings are covered with this and to our hands, this feels like dust. But to the up to the full scope, you can actually see the individual units, the individual scale. So that's pretty cool. And even like this one is like the maximum um, uh, zoom that we 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 took it. Uh, you can see the lines and how the the physical structure of this is. So we think it's very interesting, and the students really love it. And it was something. Um, easy to work with them, as I say, in the framework that this is the butterflies are so abundant, this is something that people use as a sustainable business, and, you know, people identify with that. So that was our first uh, more um, project with them, it, but pretty much just seeing the shapes and the, how they look under the light and that stuff. The other thing that we wanted to talk about, and it's very important, it's like the large scale that we we always say the Amazon are the lungs of the planet, or oh, you know, we say uh, all these things about the Amazon, but how that works, right? I mean, we know that there are millions of trees and just like moving on the river, you, you just see this ocean, right? And some of those are, as you can see, this guy there, um, so thick that they can be emerging out of the, the canopy for like, I don't know, 60 meters high. So it's, there are a lot of trees and some of them are incredibly impressive. But obviously this starts, uh, that's the large thing that we can see, right? So we know that we wanted to focus on the microscope part. 
So we start focusing on the stomata, which, is, which are these uh, smaller structures inside the eye, the, the leaves that, um, th that are responsible actually for the gas exchange. So using simple materials, as you can see, just clear nail polish and a tape, and your uh, a slide could be the glass or the slide of the, the polyscope and leaves. So I'll show you this is very simple technique, but you just uh, brush the, the nail polish very thin anywhere in a leaf. Actually, it has to be at the underneath of the leaf because that's where most stomata are located. And so, so you do that for like a, like a small, patch and then you will use um, your clear tape. We use that one because it's the most clear that we have found and once it's dry that you just uh, press it on, on top of it and then you were going to just peel it off and what you will get in that tape is the impression of the stomata and of course any other structure that the plant has. So we are actually just making like a mold, like a copy of it. And we put it in the slide. I mean, in, in, it's very easy and simple. You just have to try not to, to touch the, the tape, otherwise your, your fingerprints will, will show up there. And then you get to see the structures and really it's incredible. And this, all the series of pictures I will show you next are from the project that my colleague Terani Gonzalez did uh, this past year and early this year before the pandemic, before we were in, in quarantine. So different species, different leaves of trees, of course you can see the, the, the circles and kind of like being shaped in the central are those the, the stomata and and different species look, you know, different. And then you have more there, less there. Here to the to your right, I think you have a more clear image of how a stomatic structure is, and it's very clear by recognizing the bean shape of the opening. It's almost like a like a mouth, and this opens and closes. And is is that this a structure where the gas exchange? happen in the plant and this is such an important um, structure and organism an or uh, a structure of the plant I'm sorry that uh, explains a lot of why we value and we care about the Amazon so it's uh, that level right but with that information what we have on it is uh, using graduated slides so this is, um, so we know, you know, what's the area. We can easily just tracing in paper, uh, graph paper, we trace a leaf. And this is something that the teachers can do without any equipment, you know, you just have a piece of paper, trace the leaf, estimate the, the area, the foliar area, and then you count the stomatas and we have this little, you know, methodology, which is very common, you know, it's nothing that we invented. So then by counting in the little uh, squares, we can extrapolate the estimata density and the students do this themselves and then they can compare different tree species, different species, and then, you know, find out that in a single leaf, there is up to a million stomatas. It's just, you know, it blows your mind whenever you think of things that are so small, uh, but they do such an important job that affects all of us, right? So this is the activity that we have focused the most and we visit the schools, we do this with the kids and they absolutely love it and they do it everything themselves. So once again, just looking from the perspective of this tomato cell and then to the ecosystem is, uh, scale. So this helps us a lot to understand what the forest is, um, the services that is providing us, the, 
what is happening on a global scale and there's a lot of information about this you know so it could be hard to think that trees are as they are doing photosynthesis or they are doing the process of transpiration they are actually acting as geysers they are just putting tons of water a vapor water into the air in the atmosphere so this is this is happening for every tree not only in the amazon of course like every plant every single plant is doing this you know it's absorbing water through the roots and then it's releasing it through the atmosphere through the leaves and it's in the stomatas that this is where it happens the exchange of gas you know the co2 comes in and then the oxygen and and water comes out and there is so much to talk about this that is really interesting but the point here is that like if we look at the larger scale the amazon rainforest is putting 20 billion tons of water every day and that amount of water is actually much more than the water that puts the whole Amazon River into the Atlantic Ocean. So even though we can picture much more easily that the water in a river as the Amazon, the mighty Amazon, and we don't see much of the vapor. So it's more water up there in the air that the, the, the Amazon provides than, than the river itself. Of course, this is a system that it's circulating and it's uh, it is moving and depends one to the other, but just to keep the perspective on it. And so this is what I like it to think of it. So then from the scale of the stomata, we can think in the whole function of the Amazon rainforest and how this maintains the, the overall health and functioning on the planet, right? It helps us it helps regulate the climate, the global hydrological cycle. It, it sequestrates carbon, right? I mean, carbon, most of the things are made out of carbon. So same plants, animals, we all are made of carbon. So they're super important. And especially now that we talk so much about uh, climate change and the importance of absorbing that CO2. And of course, on top of that, it gives us oxygen. Um, contrary to what most of the people think, the oxygen, uh, it comes more from the ocean. So it says 20% uh, that comes from, from the Amazon. But um, so it's, a, it's still a very important number. So just we think that it's really uh, interesting to, to tie those different um, scales to get to make our point of the importance of the Amazon and the importance of trees standing up rather than being cut down and the importance of protecting this region uh, and conserving it for further generations for the whole future ahead. Of course, as all of us know, COVID came and pandemic times, so everything changed for us. And although and Madre de Dios, we still haven't been able to get back to our office. This is this month six, I guess, that uh, uh, in Peru, the quarantine is imposed and you can only leave your house if you have uh, essential business. So uh, schools have been closed for the whole year. So there's no uh, school year has been canceled and only it's going online. So this has been a big change and been big challenge, like everybody else, for our work, which is primarily taking kids out on the forest. So we are resourcing ourselves with the materials that normally we use our materials to complement our activities, to complement our program, something that the kids take home after spending a whole day with us. But these days we're trying to produce more of our materials, um provided to the teachers so the teachers are being able to distribute to the students and i want you to keep in perspective that um in this part of the world um internet connection is, is and having computers having printers it is not common most of the kids do not have a computer at home they don't have internet connection 
and they are doing the, their education in the best of the cases through a cell phone. So keep that in perspective and then, uh, you know, the importance of having physical material. And that's what we are focusing right now. So our material, we have, you know, created and get uh, virtual contests of uh, drawings, of colorings, give them prizes like binoculars, books, try to be, uh, to give them some stimulus. And of course, it's always great to see the creativity of the kids and the amazing work that they do, not only in art, but you know, in everything. And we have other projects like camera traps. I actually got these images this morning. So COVID times, you know, we used to have 30 people going to the field. Oh, I'm sorry. Now we have we have to be a small group, everybody keeping the distance as it should be. But the cameras are working on the Amazon, our cameras, and recording all these animals and all this fantastic uh, fauna that are roaming there. So that's something also that we are excited about it. And in that line, you know, we are doing up next week, thanks to the support of Foldscope, we are going to be announcing that hundreds of Foldscope that are already in, in, in our office they will be distributed in the same methodology, like giving the teachers, giving uh, the equipment so they can deliver to the students. And along with that, we also have other materials. Everything that we do is in synergy with other organizations, other initiatives. So we act more of, um, like facilitators. You know, we, we just want to get as much information, quality, uh, uh, opportunities and materials and of course full scope it's, it's for us is is the most important tool that uh, we are able to to put it in the hands of kids in the Amazon and teachers so as in here you can see that um, they will have the opportunity they will see through their eyes who knows what we're just giving the little stimulus the little push we don't have the time of the means, unfortunately, as you saw, we're very small to follow up much and, um, and to see what's going on or what they are doing. But, you know, the work to the point that we do uh, is just of great satisfaction and, and, and we're very happy to, to be able to tap on people and resources like the Foldscope company and the Foldscope team and, and in their generosity to help us to do this. And with that, I, that's uh, what I have to share with you. I think that this workshop is more of an interaction of people working together um, using this tool. So, so I hope this could be of use from anywhere you are in the world and uh, capitalize on the people, the resources and the work that many are doing out there, we, we think in Asia that our red, our web wouldn't work if we would do things alone. So if everybody adds something to the table, that's when things work the best. So we think that by promoting a, a, this interaction, uh, we will magnify the opportunities for a sustainable future, for training the leaders, of the conservation, not only of the Amazon, but of, of the world. So thank you very much. Thank and you of so course, much, I would be happy for any questions. Yeah, um, uh, so we already actually have one question from Samia. Samia, I don't know if you wanna say it out loud. Um, she wrote it down in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to ask uh, why why they use the uh, nail polish uh, on the on the leaf. I used to do experiments on leaves, but um, I didn't use it before, so I was surprised when I saw that. So, if you can tell us why why they use it. Sure. Um, when we had this our first workshop um, planning, when the team came to Peru, as I was telling you. I invite a number of uh, local researchers or people that work in that area in different uh, areas of research. Somebody who worked with the fungi, somebody that worked with plants, 
And these people show us, they taught us how to do it. And I guess they have done it themselves and not enough in their lab that what is the simplest method and the nail, the clear nail polish works and, and works really well. But what I want you to, to realize is that as a difference of a technique where you can peel off the, the layer of the epidermis of the leaf itself, which I've seen it, people do it, these ones make like a like a like a model, an impression of it. So what you get in the on the when the polish dries out is that it has take the form of the structures of the leaf, and that's what you're getting in the tape. So it's almost like a like a mold of the of of the leaf itself. I don't know if that yeah. answers uh -huh. the question. Yeah, 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 for sure. Thank you so much. No, you're very welcome. And it's something uh, that is very okay. Okay, I have another question. You were saying about um, a new group of Foldscope. They gonna be a new version of Foldscope or the same the same version we we worked on? It's the same. It's the same. The uh, same. Okay. Because I, I have a group of uh, these uh, Foldscopes. Um, Manu Prakash is. Um, I, I'm so honor to to be working with him it's it's a pleasure to me uh, he sent it to the school and he asked uh, the principal there to give them to me to be able to teach my students how to use them and frankly speaking that what happened um, but uh, the plan changed in the school after that year uh, I didn't teach science anymore, but I'm working on Foldscope. I'm doing experiments at home. Uh, I'm, I'm, ex I'm improving myself while I'm, I'm using the Foldscope. I didn't stop using it. That's great. That, that's awesome, Sami. I think like it, it's, it, it's a tool that you can go back. You know, it's like learning how to bike. You never forget, you know, and the fact that you can have it, we can have it in our pockets is just amazing and you never know what when you will get back to it or when the kids will use it again or the the fact that it sparks the curiosity and give them the opportunity to see with what we cannot see it with our naked eye i think is is just yeah yeah exactly yeah and it I, was I it was a I great feel, experiment yes and it was a great experience yeah yeah and as you i i think um honor to have got the attention of uh, Manu and Jim and being able to to take this this uh, the false scope to the Amazon it's it's a uh, it's unbelievable you know I mean it's I know we know it it doesn't cost much but when you yeah. add that, that there's in places where people cannot afford it and also getting it there it's just so difficult you know it's not like just oh you put it in the mail like in the states it's so easy it's we have all these resources so the, it makes yeah. it even more uh the impact is, is even larger i think yeah exactly um i want to ask about the solution we can use to keep like the <clears throat> insects or like uh the video you showed us um, I tried some solutions, but they didn't work with me because um, the solution Manu sent to us, um, one of our principals took them and she left, okay? And I didn't sew them. I didn't know the name of the solutions, uh, but I tried, I, I tried to ask my friends who studied biology. They, they gave me um, some kind of solutions to do, but they didn't work. I need the name of that solution to bring it out and to make experiments in my home um, to see the, um, the, the, the insects under the lens of the false cup while it is moving. But I don't know the name of that solution. I need, I need the name, if you please. The images that I show, the videos, were they didn't use any solution. It was just truly and honestly, the teacher and the children were just experimenting on their own with the things that come in in the you know in the in the in the bath 
so uh, there was we didn't have anything like a liquid or I don't know. I'm sure that there are things that in microscopy are used, but we only use it as it comes and it, as it is. And I, we were just able to see it. They found it. I mean, those are not my videos. They're the kids, the teacher that for the first time saw it. It probably is a sample, since it's a living organism, probably just the first seconds would it be alive or the first minutes, you know, then it will unfortunately die. So it was literally the mom, the teacher just grabbed that from the baby's belly, put it in this in the tape and then in the microscope. So that took a few minutes. And then the, the girls just put in their, you know, Nice. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. I remember, and I just want to yeah. add, I actually was there in Peru, and I remember um, that trip and that moment. I, mean, I even remember the dog, you know, that was walking around. It's so cute. Yeah. Thank you so much, Carmen. That was an amazing presentation. We also have a comment from uh, Mo Panda Jarian. Uh, Mo, do you want to um, say it out loud? I don't know if uh, he's muted, um, but yeah, he was talking uh, about. Oh, there he is. Uh, on the screen. Yeah, uh, uh, you saw. I saw some. Um, um, kids like butterflies. Kids. Yeah, butterfly scales. Yes. Uh, but this case, I saw you have saw the picture. Huh? Green color. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some uh, something is in green color. Different. Yeah. Are you used in the uh, sunlight? Like Can you catch? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's asking how did you image right the butterfly scales? Yeah. Uh, some, uh, something is color. No. Oh, the color. Yeah, yeah. Some these uh, some sun scales are in color. Mm -hmm. yeah? uh, 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 how uh, how to use uh, which which uh, light source are using that uh, scales? Yeah. So the the pictures that I show, they were once again done with the simplest method of only using clear tape on top yeah. of the scales, right? Yeah. And then it, we didn't use uh, any special light rather than the natural oh. light. This was done in the, during the day. And yeah. the reason why they look like different colors is just because how the light is being reflected. So we learned that butterfly scales actually do not have pigment. So they don't have color by itself, but it's their structure and how the light is reflecting. That's how we see it. So we oh. will see them as green, as red, as iridescent, or, you know, any color that our eyes see it. But the scientists are the ones who find out that it's actually a physical structure, how they are arranged. So it's the structure of the individual cells that determine how the light reflects, and that's what our eyes see. Okay. Okay, but uh, I, I tried to catch uh, the scales in India. I'm not able to see the uh, colors like this. Oh. So uh, I already registered in uh, 20 butterfly scales in, in Tamil Nadu. So I'm not able to see it in the colors. I, I see only one color, but uh, different shapes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. Uh, that's a, I asked that question. You, you know what I can think that um, maybe the the sample it's too thick. That's one thing. You know the 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 way the scales feel on the on the butterfly wing are like dust. It's so abundant. It's just like the whole wing is covered by by it, right? So if uh, we take the sample, maybe they, we have too many of the scales and that could be the reason you're not seeing it. I mean, these ones were like truly just tape on it and and 
you know, that was it. So I'm sorry I cannot be of more help on that. And, okay, uh, I, no problem. <laughs> keep trying okay. though. Just keep trying. <laughs> okay, I'll, I, I, I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> Carmen, maybe you can also even ask um, uh, Terani or someone, right, to make a, a short video of like exactly how they do it. Maybe that will help. Yeah. And we yeah, can absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, again, you Hi, have... Paula. This is Cynthia. Yes. Um, I also have the same uh, um, experience with the color of the butter butterfly wings. It's always kind of brownish, beige. Mm -hmm. However, I feel that when I change the source of light, that might change what I see. I've never experimented that with butterfly wings because I only found one a, a, a dead moth and so it's brown anyway. But I think that in other uh, objects that I'm evaluating, if I change from an LED or of a warmer light or something, it changes the color of the sample. So maybe if um, they can try it, it could help, not sure. Absolutely. I mean, as you say, it's the light, the source of light that is going to show us different colors. You know, it's a, uh, it's you, what, however it is reflecting and it is the, what our eyes will perceive. And the thing is that we cannot put really the wind. We just have to get the little dust. That, that's the yes. scale, because if we put the, the, the wind completely, it's, I think nothing is going to come out, it's just too thick. Um, I had one experience and I have a, a, the full wing. I'm gonna remove my, my, I'm gonna turn on my video. Maybe you could say, hi. Yes. No. So I have this is yeah. the only one that I found. So I put the full wing and it worked. It's oh, great. Sure. Yeah, it does work. I have beautiful images with that, um, but it's thick, it's thick. I'm gonna remove my video. I should have been you know, a little <laughs> bit more composed. <laughs> we only been using the tape to see the, I mean, because our objective was to see the scales. So we read uh -huh. what was the best way to get only the scales and it was just uh, taping the wind of, and the wind in the upper part, that's where the scales are attached. Correct. It has to be the win in the, in, in the upper side, and that's how we just kind of dip in it and take it out, and the tape had the samples. Yeah. Cynthia, you had another question about tape, right? I, I, I do, yeah. Carmen, I saw in one of your pictures that you said that you're using the common tape. I still haven't found any tape here in the US, I'm in the US, even though we, uh, we kept tech is in Brazil, but I haven't seen a tape that has the same clarity as the tape provided by Photoscope. So, yeah. um, and sometimes when I cannot get focus or I don't see a clear image, I'm always blaming on the tape. Um, and I would like to suggest a different one also to be used in Brazil because of expenses, obviously, yeah. you know, when we are importing something is like what, three, four times the price of something that we can get over here, including shipping. And yeah. maybe a, a brand, if you can share the brand of the tip that you think has a good clarity that you're using is like 3M or any other for us to try as well because we haven't found any mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah no i i totally get that you know we don't get the exact same things and um definitely the clarity of the tape is key and the samples that we got was using the scotch book tape it's like the you know the what very what they sell it in the state like it's for book tape right that's how they call it and that was it's, it's not a smaller, you know, like a one centimeter width. It's like more the one that is... The like thick one, yeah. The, the thick one, one, yes. So like the one for boxes. Clear. Yeah. And, um, you know, when we do these things, uh, we, we provide the children, we provide the teachers, all that. So I don't know if they, what they have been able to get. 
but um, that's the one we got it. But I, you know, I'll ask my my collaborator down there if there is anything that he has tried that works. I I don't see him in the. Otherwise, I wouldn't ask him. I don't see him in the. Do you see Terani, Paola? Because oh, he's, I don't. I don't see Terani. Okay. He will be the guy to to show us a uh, to tell us, but um, yeah. which tape? Okay. But the brand you would say that is Scotch tape. A scotch, yes. The one that I got okay. is it's the Scotch, the book tape size. That one is very, very clear. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, Thank there you. There were a few comments. Thank you so much, Cynthia. They, there were a few comments, uh, but then there was a question. Uh, Samia was asking, "How can we contact you, Carmen?" Oh. Please. Specific questions. <laughs> well, my email, I think it's, uh, did I put it, I'll, I'll put it again, but um, you can email me. I am in Facebook, just under Carmen Chavez. I am in Twitter as Carmen Acer. And Paola, I mean, I can, I will write here my email. In the and chat. The, yes, please. Yes, please, because I, I want to I wanna share with you some videos and pictures. Absolutely. So that's my email, and that's the best way to contact me, the email, carmen.chavez.ogmail.com. Did can I you put did it, get it for everyone? Uh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I'm sorry. you put on the email and Instagram and Facebook so we can follow you? There you go, uh, to everyone. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. There is and uh, my handle and yeah. I'm, I'm terrible with social media i'm very basic and all that so i apologize we, i'm old-fashioned facebook we are all your fans <laughs> yeah. um do anyone else have uh, more questions for carmen uh comments uh things you would like to share i i personally i love the work carmen and the whole team um the work they do in Peru. Um, I, um, I mean, I, I was so happy when you showed the pictures. I that was two years ago, and it feels like a million years ago. Um, it's it's just amazing, you know, the work they do with the communities in Madre de Dios in the Peruvian Amazon, and um, yeah, I mean, you know, as as uh, Roxana said, you know, I'm also a big fan, Carmen, of the work you do and the whole <laughs> down there Terani and everyone so anyways um any other questions you have or comments you have for Carmen yeah I have a oh sorry oh god <laughs> who goes you you <laughs> okay <laughs> I don't find the little hand to raise the hand, but okay. My name is Roxana. This is Roxana Carmen. And um, just uh, wanted to ask something because the first time I met Foldscope was in 2014 when, when they were actually trying the first designs. And uh, I wanted to ask if um, there, is a, there has been an improvement in the optic from that time in 2014 to right now, uh, 2020, because um, I don't know, I think it was a beta, um, beta version. And in the um, websites, they were promising, for instance, and that was the exciting part, that we could actually see like, um, cells uh, in the blood, and and then so that's my question if the one uh, that is circulating right now allows you to see uh, blood cells for instance yeah yeah paola you want to answer that one yeah yeah definitely i mean definitely foldscope has changed a lot since 2014 um and it's still changing um so yeah you know like follow us on social media and on our newsletter and everything to to learn more about what's coming next. But yes, definitely. Actually, um, one of the kits and also the pre-made box slides, uh, one of the samples are uh, f uh, frog red blood cells. Um, these are the pre-prepared slides that we send them as part of the kit, some kits. 
and you can and see right the frog uh, red blood cells um, in the in the pre-made sample. So um, yes, and you know it, it's a product that continues evolving with time. So um, we'll have more exciting news uh, in the next few months. So yeah, yeah. But since 2014, even the design um, actually you can um, if you go to our website that has changed a lot from uh, definitely from 2014 so okay. I, I hope i'm not in the blacklist of um, manu because i actually got 30 sets from that first beta version and took it to manu to actually in manu national park but it uh, didn't have the opportunity and i think i shared this with you guys um before to to make uh, many many children to to use it, but uh, but we were excited about it because of the promise of being able to see blood cells and maybe in the field in that remote location be able to see I don't know Leishmania cells, yeah. <laughs> Leishmania yeah. like uh, Uta because uh, uh, it's very common to have uh, strange wounds and like that and not necessarily is uh, Leishmania. But at that time already, uh, it was obvious that Polskov was aiming to, to that goal, so that uh, to build bridges with the, yeah. with the kids, you know, and, and this uh, do-it-yourself approach. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> actually, just a clarification for the ones who don't know, actually, I mean, Roxana said this, Manu, well, Manu, that's the name of a national park in Peru. So, <laughs> it's not, she's not talking about, she was talking so, about Manu, the national it's, park. Yeah, it's, it's spelled the same way. So, um, and also for the other people, Manu is a remote location and it has indigenous communities inside who I think I'm, um, I'm correct to say has never, none of the kiddos there have never used a microscope. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty and, sure. uh, and I'm uh, very, as you, I'm sure, uh, a very strong uh, supporter that it opens and widens uh, your horizon to get access to this uh, new technology because you can see things that you have never seen before. And it's uh, something, it's similar. I mean, so remote is this place and maybe it's uh, a little bit uh, still away from these uh, technologies that even pair of binoculars, which is, which is also an optic instrument, uh, changes their um, perspectives like dramatically. And um, just, and then the full scope, it's a still, it's a still, um, it's still a promise, I would say. Still, I said just because, uh, bueno, um, Carmen, you will make it happen, right? All the kiddos in, <laughs> in Manu will <laughs> happen. <Yeah. laughs> <Old> scope. <laughs> and that's it, that's it. We've been so lucky that um, we got uh, this team to come and we, you know, we, we just invite them over. It was just an incredible, you know, opportunity. And I know that the 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 full team, the full scope team felt the same way because um, I remember we it took us a lot of work in preparation to organize the workshop the logistics uh, to pull together the activities right so when they came we had truly a printed program and we knew where to go and everything and it was only possible because. Uh, and on the ground, we have all these connections that we have built as an organization for from many, many years. So, you know, in our case, in my case, I'm always looking for things that can improve the learning experience of the children in the Amazon and the, the people that live already there. And... Um, and I think Roxana has to invite us to go to Manu Paola so we can go uh, yeah, there and invited. share about experiences. Yeah, I want to go. <laughs> I <wanna> go. <laughs> and, and anywhere, right? I mean, this, all you guys that are here in this call, like, can you imagine how amazing things 
and the landscapes and you know the organisms from Lebanon, from India, Brazil, Mexico, Nigeria. I mean, I I think it's just fascinating that through this tool we are able to share those glimpses of it. It's just incredible, and I'm just blessed that I've been able to put that in the hands of kids and they've done it. The teachers, I myself, I've used it and I love the phone scope. Uh, and my kid has, he uses to, I actually went to his school to and work with his teachers and it's just something that it gets me very, very excited. Um, you know, so I guess that's how I am a super user because I just connected to people, you know, more than me being the one who actually uses as often as I should, you know. Thank you so much, Carmen. Um, anyone else would like does ha uh, has any comments or questions for for Carmen? Um, or curious about the work she does? Anything? Uh, I, uh, I'm more on question for you, Dora. Hello. Yeah. Ah, uh, I'm not able to upload in um, Foldscope app. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 app is, I'm not able to upload the pictures in our app, Foldscope app. Okay, which phone? Any, any problem? Do you have an Android or is it an iOS? Uh, I have an Android, no. Okay, I will check um, up on that uh, with the team, but mm -hmm. that's, that's good to know. So yeah. for the ones who don't know, we have a Foldscope app um, that you can download. Um, can you tell us about it and make a video tutorial about it? Because I didn't use it before, frankly speaking. Yeah, it's just it's just linked to the Microcosmos website, which is where you post, where you a place where you can post your observations. So the Foldscope app just um, you just download it. Um, on your um, Apple Store or Google Play Store, and it's just you just um, log in using the username you already have, and mm -hmm. if you don't, you just create a new account. And yeah, you know, it's just it's just it allows you to post into Microcosmos, so you can just take pictures, upload. Oh, it's 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 a normal application, yeah. There's nothing uh, nothing new, or yeah. nothing different, yeah. It, well, I mean, it is different in the sense that it's an app, right? And it's not just through the website as it used to be, but it is very easy, straightforward to use. Yeah, it's not complicated. Mm -hmm. It's not complicated. That's what I mean. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Paula, it's yeah. Cynthia again. Talking about the app, um, at, at the beginning, you could only post pictures and videos that you were taking live. Mm -hmm. But um, Eleanor mentioned that next version would be like a, um, you being able to access your camera. Is it already possible or not yet? I, I don't think it's possible yet, but that's definitely something we're working on. Um, and we will be releasing either next week or in the next couple of weeks. But yes, we okay. so looking just, forward to it. Yeah, so yeah because sometimes we take many pictures that they're not as good as we wish mm -hmm. or a long video that you know some part of it is not good so i like to edit to get the the, <laughs> the most beautiful part to post so that's why my suggestion to have that option yeah. no thank you so much and just for the ones who already have the full school app, app just make sure you um refresh it once a week or something to, you know, like get those features. Uh, um, Brian is a member in our team who's, who's working on that. And we are really excited about uh, new features that the Fullscope app will have. And as you know, like if you have any issues with it or um, comments or something, just message us on social media, let us know what's working, what's not working so we can, you know, like fix those things. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hola, Paula. Hola, hi. I want to say on some few words. I remember there was a time a request was made for translators to certain languages, and I was able to um, make one translation into Spanish with one other guy. 
-hmm. And now my question is the choice of language, is it available on the Foscope app? No. Or how far has the project of translation gone? It's not available yet. But that's another thing we are working on, yes. Um, and we will, um, yeah, we will give more information once we get to the point, but currently the app is just in English, um, but we definitely want to have it in many, many different languages. Um, so more people, uh, so it's easier for more people to use it, yeah. Right, now. but I don't know if any other translation has been done um, apart from the first one. I don't know, the first one was about some project in the, I think in the northern part of the USA, about some dam or some marsh land or marshy land, I don't know. I don't know if you know about that project. Um, it was translated to Spanish, but after that first one, I've not seen any update about another translation exercise. Yeah, as far as I know, there haven't been uh, that many translations besides the ones you can find on our website. And also mainly the translations have been done on um, tutorials and guides. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, we are hoping, that's one thing we wanna make sure to be as inclusive as possible and we don't want language to be a barrier uh, for knowledge to be, you know, transmitted. So. Um, yeah, so that's one thing we, we are working on. And that's another thing also, if you go to our microcosmos community, you can see posts from different people. And some of them are, I would say most of them are in English, but we have quite a few in different languages. So um, that's, you know, um, the community is international and it's big and we are happy to see it growing. Uh, but sure. we definitely need to, you know, like address those things and, and we're working on some solutions, but if any of you have any ideas, just feel free to message us on, on social media, please, with your ideas. We are super happy to like. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Um, any other thoughts or comments for Carmen? Carmen, this has been great. Um, I love, as I said, I love watching, uh, uh, I, I love, uh, all, I'm a huge fan of the work that you do and just, um, Seeing again those pictures from the trip uh, brought back lots of happy memories. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. We need to get back. And anybody who wants to come, we, we always welcome. <laughs> um, hi, Definitely Anna. knocking on your door. <laughs> oh, go on. Um, I have a quick question. Um, so I just want to know if you work with both children and teenagers. And how many participants do you recommend for a workshop? Thank you. Uh, we do, the Photoscope, we have done it mostly with kids that are already in sixth grade to more, you know, uh, up to the end of high school. And this was only because it, it was easier to, to assemble with them and to, to, to do all the process of it, which is, the key part, right? I mean, when you do the full scope, assembling is the most important first step. So I think I would recommend kids above 10, 12, I guess, depending on the, also the setting. And when, when the full scope thing came, we had large groups of, um, I mean, workshops. We worked at the same time with, in a classroom, between 20 and 40, I would say, we, but that was a lot, but we had not only this, the, it was five or six members of the full school team, and then I had at least seven other people be trained in advance, so we were all able to help, so if it's only one person, I think it will just take longer, because the kids ask frequently, like, is this right, or is not, this done is right, it's just, you know, it does, mine doesn't work, mine doesn't look like that, or like, oh, I, I just lost my lens. I mean, the kids are kids, right? I mean, it took you know, a completely one week. One it, week. It took you to assemble, Sonia? Yeah, with 20 students in grade six. There you go. Look at that. So I guess it all depends on your audience. You know, it's, I think a smaller group is your single person. It's what I recommend the most. The other thing that um, we are... Yeah, if, if they were um, younger or 
learn fewer it's gonna be better but i as i told you i was their science teacher and i was supposed to teach them how how to use the full stop in many ways and to assemble it so that was the um, the reason i took time to let them understand how to assemble it how to use it how to to start doing like slices and everything so the whole steps took me one week after the one week i didn't answer any question they just work alone they just prepare something at home and bring it to school and they go to the board and explain what they do and how how they find that um, this is Cynthia again. Can do you? Can I um, share my experience? Is that okay? Yeah. We we assembled a, a, the, on a class of thirty four kids with me alone, um, teaching them how to assemble. It took us for uh, forty minutes. Oh. To assemble, but I put the video, the the tutorial. And I was pausing it. Yeah. It was a little bit messy on the Video sense that projector. the kids were talking and they were asking questions. But whenever they say, is this how you do it? I'm like, yes, go and help your, you know, your friend over there. So the kids were helping me as they were getting it. So whoever finished first would help the rest of the group and they continue to move until everybody could move to the next step. Um, uh, what I think trainer. Was, my, <laughs> was my biggest flaw was that after it was all assembled, we had uh, 40 minutes to do slides. And I think uh, from not being a biologist, I did not do a good job going outside with the teacher and I was leading the team to teach them how to do the slides and prepare and evaluate something. It was too many kids asking too many questions. So I think I went to the field too fast and I should have taught them a little bit longer how to prepare a slide, what to look for before I went on the field and gave them freedom to do whatever they want and explore what was their interest to bring it to me. So, but assembling was not an issue. Thank you. That's definitely um, a great point. Okay, uh, Ebenezer here again. Um, our little team in Nigeria, I've not been with them since um, we have started because I'm here in Argentina, but I try to coordinate from here. We have been doing two to three days workshop and uh, within those days, we were able to show them how to assemble the full scope and to see samples like spirogyra in water bodies. Um, taking different samples, maybe from tap water, from well, or from a stream, and see which one is contaminated or not. Um, so within uh, 40, 50 minutes, we are able to describe how to assemble the photoscope. We use projection. So we make a projector of the video of how to assemble um, the origami and all, and they are able to follow after us. And um, like um, the last speaker mentioned, one person helps the other. So it becomes like a um, peer group influence. Uh, so once you get it, show someone else how to do it. So, and it has been working. But for, for the COVID issue, we have stopped training for now. So what we do is we find schools, invite us over. Maybe they are doing end of the year event or like my secondary school group. We were celebrating 20 years of graduation from secondary school. So I mobilized my team from here and they went over and they taught um, students from the girls session and the boys session and um, they really enjoyed it. So that is what we do. We look for someone who wants to celebrate one something or the other and say, okay, do you wish to add a little bit of STEM influence in your program so we can um, uh, sensitize these children and raise, arouse their interest to find appreciation for science and STEM generally. Yeah, thank you. That's great. Sounds like a, that you figured it out really well how to get them excited and interested and then they just go from there. Yeah, it's fun, yes. Yeah.
Well, thank you so much, Carmen. Um, this has been a great, great workshop. I think everyone, I enjoyed it a lot and I think everyone um, uh, has as well. Um, and with that, yeah, you know, um, we want to thank everyone who was able to join today um, to this workshop. We are recording this, so we are going to post it on our YouTube um, channel, Postcode Life Workshops. Um, and that's where we've been posting our previous workshops as well. We um, will have one next Saturday, so please make sure to, to check our social media accounts to learn about what's coming next. And um, yeah, Carmen, I don't know if you want to say some like um, closing words. <laughs> well, just first of all, thank you so much. I'm just blown away that you all guys came to, to listen and to see this presentation. And, um, I, you know, we all are interested in the same things, which is wonderful. And my, I guess my message is just to keep help spreading the word of, of this tool because it just opens a window, a whole new universe, and that is fascinating. So that's my message. And thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you everyone for connecting. And on behalf of the whole school team, uh, thank you, Carmen, so, so much for uh, making some time today to share the amazing work you've been doing. Um, yeah, you know, I think uh, I love uh, reading all the messages in the chat. And thank you, everyone. And hopefully I'll see you next Saturday. Bye. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody.